Welcome to uh, Science Communication for the Non-Scientist. Uh, this is a workshop that uh, we gave in the Research Commons at the University of Maryland College Park in March of 2017. And some of our goals for this workshop were to familiarize students with the different types of scientific communication that are, that are out there um, and how different, actual different types could be useful to someone that's um, trying to break into science or trying to learn a new area of science. So our second goal is to um, give students strategies for evaluating the validity of a, of a science communication. Um, and this workshop is um, written from the perspective of someone uh, without a science background but is interested in learning more about a topic in science. So when considering the different types of um, science communication that are out there, they can range from communication that is targeted for a general audience all the way to uh, communication that is really targeted for an expert audience. So to start on the left with a general audience, journalism, popular-ish nonfiction, citizen science and crowdsource science and social media and blogs tend to be geared towards a general audience. And so if you're trying to get started in a particular area, they might be a good place to get your feet wet, a good place to get started. Then as you go along the spectrum towards expert, you get into peer-reviewed books, departmental talks, journal articles, and scientific meetings. And, and those are geared more towards an expert audience. You know, in these types of communications, they are, it's where scientists are talking to other scientists. And so it might be a little bit more, um, might be a little bit more technical. It might be a bit more, um, more jargon might be used. But it is, that is the way that scientists communicate with other scientists. And then all along the spectrum, you can pick up personal interactions. And there are many different types of personal interactions that might be useful to you when you're trying to, to familiarize yourself with a new concept in science. You know, some of them could be just like an interview, um, just you know, having coffee with someone, going to a lab meeting. All of those could be very useful. And as I'm sure you're familiar with within your own discipline, different people are better at communicating that discipline than others to someone who isn't familiar with it. And so that's why that is um, all along the spectrum. So there are different types of um, science, scientific communication. We talked from, gen, you know, how they, how they fall along the spectrum from general to expert. Um, some of the more general um, kind of science communication that's out there um, is in very much in the popular media. And uh, on this slide is a, it's just a, a plot of where I believe some uh, science journalists decided, you know, kind of where, what their spectrum is in terms of uh, if the science is really that interesting and if that science is really based on solid evidence. And so the source for that is in the lower right corner, if you're interested in taking a look at that yourself. But to take a look at, the, um, at this plot, so on the horizontal axis, you have their, their question is, is the media outlet science coverage driven mostly by evidence? And so more towards the origin, and, and that's in the green, is evidence-based reporting. And as you go further from the origin and into the yellow and then the red, <clears throat> you're getting more into uh, what is ideologically driven. And then on the vertical axis, the, these journalists plotted, um, is, the scientist, is the science contact just you know, compelling? Like, is it interesting? And so at the origin would be not usually, so it's just not interesting science, and that's possible. Um, and then as you move towards, move away from the origin, you're getting into really interesting, almost always interesting science. So if you notice in the upper left box, it is the darkest green box, that's where you're going to find, you know, science, nature, the economist, the Atlantic, the, and National Geographic, some pretty venerable um, communicators of science. Towards the lower right, in the, the pinkest box, you might find some of the, the sources of science and science communication that might be the most suspect, you know, at least according to, to these journalists. I think other folks would probably agree. That might be where you're getting into things that 
are um, more ideologically driven or just not that interesting. Of course, there's a lot in between. And, you know, we could probably argue about where they should be, but this is just sort of a, a way to get you started. Um, if you're out looking for popular science, so, you know, science communication for a general audience, and you find something and you're not sure, you know, is it, is it really that great? This might be something that you could refer back to. So all science communication is rooted in the scientific method. And almost all science communication is in, on the expert end of the spectrum is going to be um, communicated pretty much in the context of the scientific method. So the scientific method is a process that's repeated over and over again in science. It begins with making observations and forming questions about those observations, which then leads to making hypotheses and predictions which then leads to designing and carrying out an experiment. Once the, that experiment is successful, uh, then there are results to analyze. And with those results, scientists can make conclusions and communicate what they found. And the scientific method is very much a part of how scientific journal articles are organized. And so scientific journal articles are organized by having an introduction um, which will include uh, some of the original observations and questions. It'll also probably include some sort of literature review about um, what's been done and what's been observed before by other people. And it will also include um, the hypotheses and predictions that were made by the authors. The next section in a scientific journal article is the method section, and that just describes how the authors designed and carried out their experiment. And so then methods are followed by the results section, which is uh, often has um, tables or figures where authors are just reporting what they found um, from their experiments. And so in the discussion section, authors are going to talk about what they found. They're going to try to explain why they found what they found, and they'll probably talk about uh, future directions for their research. And so we're going to talk a bit about scientific journal articles because they are the, they are the premier communication of science. Um, that is, if you want the most up-to-date and current science, um, one would go to scientific journal articles. So we're going to talk about how to find them, uh, how to evaluate the validity of a journal article, how to read a journal article, and how to get help if you need it. So how do you find a journal article? So probably the first place you're going to go is you're going to go to a database. And you can find a database by going to the home page of the libraries and in the, the white box in the middle of the page, click on the databases tab and you can browse databases by subject category. You can also find your database by the name of the database, and so um, you could go directly to the database if you know which database you want to go to. If you search databases by subject, um, you have a wide variety of subject categories that you can select. So for example, the arrow um, for a subject is pointing to geology. If you wanted to um, look into geology, there are 23 databases that are there for you, and it's a good place to start. If you know the database that you're going to use, you could put that database in the Find Databases box and go from there. If you already know which journal uh, that you want to look at, you can just go to Journal Finder, which is on the left-hand side and is under Journal Finder and you can go directly to that journal. So for a lot of topics in science, you're probably going to use the Web of Science. And um, this is what the Web of Science looks like. And if you have a particular topic, like you want to look up biodiversity, you would you could enter in biodiversity in the basic search box, and you can go from there. Another interesting thing about this page uh, for Web of Science is at the top, there's a tab for journal citation reports. And, and that's where you would you can look into impact factor. And so impact factor is, a, is a, an evaluation of how many times a particular journal has been cited by other scientists over a, a fixed period of time. And it is a way to 
it's not the way, but it is a way to get a, a, a handle on how popular a journal is. How much is it being, how much are the articles in that journal being used by other scientists? So that's, a, that's a, something that you could play with if you're interested in the future. So, okay, so you've gone to Web of Science, you've entered in a topic, you've found some journal articles, and you're ready to read them, and you, you want to consider how valid are these journal articles. So, some things to ask yourself are things like, where is the article published? How did I find it? Is the journal peer-reviewed? Is the article or the journal cited in other papers? Um, has that particular article ever been retracted? And is the journal predatory? If you're using a database like Web of Science, the chances of an article that you found being from a journal that's predatory or not peer-reviewed are very slim. If you're using um, a database that is, is indexed, um, the chances are that you're gonna, what you're finding is something that you can use and something that you can trust. And, as, and you can trust it in the sense that it is at least peer-reviewed and that journal isn't predatory. If you're interested in knowing if the article um, or the journal has been cited by other scientists, you can go right on back and look at impact factor. That's something that you could take a look at. So another consideration is if the journal article has been retracted. And so if an article has been retracted, sometimes it is, it's actually just labeled on the journal article. Um, another source that you can take a look at for retraction is to look at Retraction Watch, and they keep track of, of journal article retractions, and it's also a very interesting read, so that's always kind of a fun thing to take a look at. Okay, so you've looked up a topic, you've found some journal articles, and something that you might want to know is that not all scientific journals um, are put together the same way. On the left, I have Nature, Science, and Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. And in these journals, they have articles from th all kinds of scientific disciplines. They cover the full, the full spectrum. On the right are just examples of journals. And these journals are like Ecology, Annals of the Entomological Society, Cell, and Botany. And these are journals that are more specific for a subdiscipline. And so when you read the article, you might have a slightly different approach between these two different types of scientific journals. So the two different types of journals um, can become important to uh, remember when you're trying to read journal articles because the journal articles in the two different types of journals are going to be a little different. So for example, if you find an article in the journal Science, the, ar the article will be very short but will be very dense with information. Uh, the article will be a very brief communication and the figure legends and captions are going to be really long. And don't ignore those because the captions are really important. You might find really important details in those captions. The journals like Science, Nature, and Proceedings, they're intended for a variety of audiences, scientists from a variety of different disciplines. Um, they publish work from a variety of different science disciplines. And the articles in these journals uh, represent filling a, a big gap in knowledge or they've They've, the article represents a significant advance in our knowledge about something. It's, it's kind of a big deal to publish in these journals. However, the other type of journals, the ones that are more specific to subdisciplines, are also very important, and you're going to find amazing and excellent science in those journals as well. The articles in those journals are going to be longer, and they're going to have more space, more physical space to explain their, what, they, what they've observed, the concepts that they're testing. Um, they're going to have more space to talk about what they did. The article will be inherently longer. These types of articles are also a really great place to find other references that you might be interested in because they have the space in, to cite other papers. The, these, the journals that are more intended for a subdiscipline, they also, the, the papers in these journals represent filling a gap or an advance in that subdiscipline or area. It's still important and interesting science. So let's say you find a journal article 
and you're ready to read it. Most journal articles are meant to be read from the inside out. And what I mean by that is that a lot of journal articles are written for people to, that are going to take a look at the figures and tables, and then they're going to start to actually read the text of the article. And that's because the figures and tables are really the critical message of the paper. So once you get really good at reading journal articles, you'll probably be very, very interested in those figures and tables, and maybe a little less interested in the text. Now, instances where you're definitely interested in the text of the journal article, you, you want to look at the methods to evaluate the validity of the methods that they used. You want to take a look at the introduction to find out what sort of questions that they're interested in. You might be interest, interested in doing something like what they did, and so you're really going to study the methods in order to reproduce what they did, something like that. In journal articles, jargon prevails. It's a, it's a slightly different language, and the, the more you read journal articles, the easier it will get. So I've talked a little bit already about how to read a journal article, but there are a lot of really great resources to help you figure out what works best for you uh, to read a scientific journal article effectively. And, and so these are sort of five things that you could take a look at. They're from a variety of perspectives. You know, we have uh, a physicist, some folks in the life sciences. Number four uh, is from just multiple perspectives. It's from multiple disciplines. And so um, they might be really good things to take a look at if you're having trouble reading scientific literature or just want to hone your skills to more effectively read scientific literature. Okay, so let's say you're just at a loss and you need to know how to get help. So if you need to get help, the libraries are here for you. And there are subject specialists, librarians that are available to help you find what you need to find. So for example, we have direct email or phone. You can always con contact us directly. You can chat online with folks uh, if you're having trouble finding resources. And that's on the Ask, Ask Us box at the top. Or you can schedule a consultation with a librarian by clicking on the red button. So we've gone over scientific journals. We've talked about how to find them. So you can do a database search and take a look at review articles and introductions of science, of science articles, of experimental science articles. We've talked a little bit about how to evaluate the validity of journal articles. Um, we've talked a little bit about um, impact factor of the journal and retraction watch and retractions in general. Like, for example, an article might just be labeled with a retraction. We talked a little bit about how to read journal articles. So there are a variety of perspectives on um, what strategy is best to read a journal article. Do what works for you. The main thing is, is just to keep practicing and to keep doing it, and it will get easier for you. And if you need to get help, we're here to help. Thank you very much.